Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on the real life situation in my country as this awful war with Russia continues. But I also believe that watching my videos you will be able to witness our victory. I'm very grateful for the support that you demonstrate to Ukraine and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe because the world needs to know more about Ukraine. But today it won't be about Ukraine, but about Belarus. In a couple of my vlogs, we have discussed the dangers that this country imposes on Ukraine and how likely that it will participate in this war. But as yesterday, they have hit one of the missiles, which were actually Russian missiles targeted on Kyiv. And now they claim that this is a Ukrainian provocation. I have decided to look more into detail into what actually Belarus army is. In private discussions of uh, realistic, ordinary people, I know that like Belarus is not a strong military country. But for me, it is a part of this war from the very first days of it. Why? From one point of view, Lukashenko tries to pretend that he is neutral, but he has given his territory to Putin's troops and they do whatever they want on the territory of the independent Belarus. Many of the attacks that were targeted on Ukraine took place and started on the territory of Belarus. That was the attack on Kyiv, for example, at the very first days of this war. Also, my semi-safe region was targeted from the missiles that were carried on the planes that stay and fly from the airfields of Belarus. Of course, to trick the global community, these planes are registered as Russian, but they spend all of their time, they stay and they fly from the airfields of Belarus. So it goes without saying that Lukashenko has like blessed this war 100%, but he is not the one to decide. And when I have come across various articles about Belarus army, I was laughing when I I came across a phrase like Lukashenko's army because it is not his army, same as Belarus is not his country. He is a puppet dictator totally under control of Putin. And maybe his brain works a little bit differently and he sees that Putin's war in Ukraine is a huge failure for the dream of the USSR, but he tries to, like, I don't know, maneuver and pretends that he is not a part of the special military operation, as they call it. But of course, he is, the only thing is that he is 100% dependent on Putin and his position. He does not want to like actively involve into this losing game, but he also understands that his life and his career without Putin as the president of Russia is impossible. That's why he gave all the territory of his country in the disposal of Russian orcs. And many of Russian military uh, machines, many of their planes and many of their people now stay on the territory of Belarus, prepared to act in case of emergency. Ukrainians are not like afraid of the Belarus army because we know it is not a strong army. According to various rankings that exist, military rankings, it seems to me one was like military balance or something. Belarus army occupies something like a 50s position in the world. But since the February 2022, uh, very few people trust military rankings. Why? Because Russian army ranked number two in the world. And now we see that it ranks number two, but in Ukraine. So uh, in real life situation, the standards and the behaviors can turn to be totally different. But why? Because we are Ukrainians protecting our own land and we know why are we doing that. And Russian orcs coming to loot and rape don't clearly understand what are they doing in this much better, more democratic and stronger country that has so many good allies around. So the army of Belarus, according to this international military rankings, is somewhere below 50. I think it's pretty realistic and the number of their soldiers is not big close to 48,000 people. But of course, they have this mobilization reserve. They did not start any mobilization processes, unlike Russia, but they claim that if they start this mobilization, the reserve can be 290,000 people. Plus also, 
they always like to like copy Ukraine and it's so funny when after the war, the start of the war in Ukraine, we had this phenomenon of territorial defense where so many volunteers traveled and joined the brigades to protect the, uh, their country. They have announced the territorial defense of Belarus because, you know, Ukrainians attack everyone. <laughs> and uh, they claim that they have like 100 10,000 people in that territorial defense of Belarus. I don't know what kind of people are there because um, in contrast to Russian society, I feel like Belarus people are not that into this war and they, they are brainwashed, um, but at least they try to change Lukashenko from time to time and there were huge protests and we all witnessed them when he falsified the results of the elections and continued his dictatorship because of Putin's support. It was a very emotional moment for me because I believe that strong and democratic and free Belarus is possible and not only possible but very much desirable for the world, for Ukraine and for Europe as a whole. But so far this dying friendship of two dictators that recently exchanged the rings because Putin gave presents to SND leaders and Lukashenko put a ring on his finger saying Russia 2023. So after this engagement, perhaps they became even more uh, <laughs> close, like uh, they have to support each other, you know, people like that, because the whole world is against them. Maybe Kim Jong in or someone else can join their party too. So uh, the detailed analysis of the army of Belarus states that they don't have many soldiers. They have close to uh, seven brigades of ground troops and they also have air forces and air defense uh, systems. They claim that they have 1,300 tanks, but intelligence services ha say that they have less than 500 and these tanks are older than me i'm not saying that i'm old but for a tank you know with these innovations and things maybe so the majority of these tanks come from the soviet union and it is very likely that with the level of corruption with the level of uh, irresponsibility that is common for belarus and russian armies these tanks are not properly working also they have close to 808 just eight controlled missiles and uh, they are produced together with China and they are not far reaching to 200 kilometers or something. So they target missiles from the territory of Belarus on the Ukrainian cities, but they use Russian missiles and they claim that these are like Russians, not Belarusians. They simply uh, observe. And uh, in general, this looks like that Lukashenko army, I said that, I don't mean like, um, Putin's Lukashenko army is uh, not strong at all and uh, in the majority of cases when we see attacks uh, these are Russian attacks from the territory of Belarus but the guilt of Belarus uh, is that they have given their territories and even their political governmental structures to Russia and now they are controlled in this like manual regime and uh, they have less than 60 planes, they don't have many people, they have old weapons and they have old machines. And I'm sure that if they had something more or less normal, they have already given it to Russian troops. And now they simply try to maneuver, not knowing what to do, because in Lukashenko's head, Russia was invincible. And he thought that like his dictator boss Putin is invincible too and that the life and active duty of Putin guarantees him the continuation of his dictatorship or tsardom whatever you call it but now he sees that Putin is dying as a politician and uh, it feels like he won't get the necessary support and it's too late to switch and to become like a normal leader democratic leader because everybody knows that what who Lukashenko is and it all looks very sad but we have to be attentive my region borders with Belarus I know that we have lots of Ukrainian armed forces territorial defense forces lots of defense structures constructed on the border and it d does not seem likely that they will attack from I mean like on foot from the side of Belarus but still we have to be careful because Lukashenko is under huge pressure and they may use 
this side of uh, Belarus-Ukraine border to distract the attention, for example, of Ukrainian armed forces or something. But anyway, we don't have to be afraid because there is no need to be afraid of such cowards that are hiding in bunkers, that are poisoning people, that are falsifying the results of their elections because they are not worth honest elections. They, they are losers and they know that about themselves. That's what makes them so angry. And the success of normal countries, normal citizens, normal presidents that come and go is something that irritates them greatly. So this is a brief outline what I personally have read about the Belarus armed forces. And let's hope that one day Belarus will be liberated and people will be able to join the normal European family. We Ukrainians are ready to teach them some reforms or whatever. Thank you once again for watching my videos. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Tomorrow we have prepared an interesting video with some facts about Ukraine in 2022. So please follow the updates on the channel. Thank you for buying me coffees. Thank you for becoming my uh, patrons and I'm honored to have you in my Ukrainian life. Slava Ukraina!